What's up guys, Cypher Pole 808 back again with another One Piece video. Today we're going to be doing my discussion and thoughts on One Piece chapter 1010. Uh, if you guys haven't already checked out my live reaction, go ahead and click the link above. Uh, but not you have, let's jump right into the review. So, dude, what a hype chapter. Oh my god, like, just insane. Oda just delivered so much hype in one chapter like i don't even know where to begin so we're just going to start off right at the beginning so uh we have the supernovas uh kind of picking up where the last chapter left off with their plan to uh try and separate big mom and kaido you know this kind of divide and conquer strategy um we see big mom kind of falling off the uh, onigashima about to fall into the water but then uh kaido kind of steps in and is able to distract uh zoro while he's trying to slice up prometheus and uh, allows prometheus and napoleon to go kind of fly down and catch Big Mom and we see Law and he's like yeah it doesn't matter uh it's not going to be worth carrying out the plan if one of us dies in the process and then we see Kid he's kind of like hey we were just trying to separate them anyway so me and Killer will take on Big Mom and then we see him kind of walking over but then as the chapter kind of pans we see uh Prometheus when he swoops down in to save Big Mom we see him you know kind of bad mouthing uh zeus he's like oh yeah that dude's useless and he just slows us down and then we see him kind of ask big mom for something but we don't actually see you know what prometheus asked for and then in a couple panels later we see uh kid and killer you know walking over to go deal with big mom and she's coming back up and we see kid kind of look up to the sky and he's like what's with these clouds so that kind of leads me to wonder you know Maybe Prometheus kind of convinced Big Mom to either, you know, create this new um, cloud homie or, you know, lightning homie, especially with the clouds that are kind of around Onigashima right now because of Kaido and his, uh, his dragon powers. So maybe she'll be able to make like this crazy strong uh, homie to re replace Zeus and then uh, maybe we'll see Zeus kind of either be taken back and re-consumed by big mom or kind of have his power given over to napoleon you know something like that because we did see you know napoleon look like he was kind of scheming when he was asking for uh that whatever that thing was from big mom so um interested to kind of see what happens with that um and then we see kind of you know we go back over and we see luffy kind of you know knocked out and he's still glaring at kaido and this is the second time we've seen luffy kind of do this and you know both times kaido has really taken uh note of it and he's like this damn kid he keeps staring at me even though i've knocked him out like he just glares right at me and he's like you know what maybe it's time to gouge out his eyes or crush his you know brain or his heart and then we see uh zoro kind of steps up and he's like he tells uh trafalgar he's like no this is going to be my all-out attack, and uh, we're going to see, you know, what I'm able to do, but it's going to be up to you after I do this, because this is going to be everything that I got. And then he tells Kaido, he's like, yo, Kaido, uh, if you want to do all that, you're going to have to go through me first. That's my captain over there. And, you know, I was getting flashbacks to when they were on, uh, you know, Thriller Bark, towards the end of Thriller Bark, when we see Kuma, and he, you know, pushes out all of that pain that uh, Luffy had experienced, and he tells Zoro, like, okay, if you can take this, and Zoro was like, yep, you gotta, you know, take my head before you take my captain's head. I'll take in all that pain. And, you know, same thing right here. Luffy's, you know, down and he's uh, not able to defend himself when we see Zoro come in clutch. And, you know, all the Zoro fanboys out there, you guys had your moment. And we, the moment we have been waiting for since, you know, since the time skip, since we got to the new world, since the last time we saw it. I think everybody knows what I'm talking about. We're talking about Asura, you know. The nine sword style Zoro just slicing the shit out of Kaido. And, you know, he is in very high esteem company with uh, Kozuki Odin as the only other person to kind of cut uh, Kaido. You know, presumably Kaido potentially classed against, you know, Roger and Whitebeard. And although they were never able to, uh, you know, he was never able to beat them. They never really damaged him with a lasting scar like the way Odin did. And now our boy Zoro over here just coming in and just slicing Kaido. And then something even more insane. After, you know, seeing Asura, you're like, oh my god, how could you get more insane? And then we have Kaido confirm that Zoro has Conqueror's Hockey. The color of the Supreme King, he has conqueror's hockey like come on are you serious zoro the first mate everybody first mate i'm a zoro fanboy love zoro and you know especially after the um 
a little bit of disrespect, not really disrespect, but, you know, Sanji getting that bounty increase from Whole Cake Island, you know, Zoro didn't really, he was all anxious to go and rub it in his face, but, you know, I think uh, this one just kind of trumps that by leaps and bounds. I mean, to have one of the Yonko tell you, like, you have the Supreme King hockey as well, what the hell is with this generation? And he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, oh, don't you worry. Uh, you weren't able to knock me off my feet, but you gave me a, a wound that's going to stay with me. So, you know, to see Zoro able to do that and to kind of, you know, unleash Enma and be able to, you know, potentially do something that uh, we see Luffy kind of do later in this chapter with, um, you know, infusing his Ryuo with, um, you know, Conqueror's Hockey. So it would be kind of interesting to see, you know if they kind of explained what Zoro did, like if he did the same thing that we see Luffy do later in the chapter, I'm not really too sure, but uh, it'll be, you know, interesting nonetheless. And then we see, um, you know, Kaido acknowledges the strength of the supernovas, you know, yet again, this is, you know, the third or fourth time I think, you know, we've seen him kind of acknowledge or, you know, tip his head towards the supernovas for being able to either damage him or, you know, uh, get off a surprisingly strong attack against him, you know, all these things, they're slowly garnishing his uh, respect, and it's kind of nice to see that even the Yonkos, even though, you know, they're like, oh, these damn upstarts, these little whippersnappers, you know, they can still, you know, give them credit where credit's due, because, you know, sometimes with the older generations, and you see in series where they're not able to acknowledge the younger generation, even when they get their ass whooped by them, you know, they still can't acknowledge them, but, you know, Kaido, he's over here, he's like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll give you a little bit of credit, not a lot, a little bit, he's like, you know, if you guys join me, Probably could have taken on the world, but you didn't, so now I gotta kill you. So, you know, we're back to that whole mentality again. You know, I think that's the second or third time this battle that he's like, oh, I gotta kill you now. So it's pretty, you know, awesome. And then we see, you know, Kaido kind of come in and, you know, Law was about to try and save Zoro after he's able to do this awesome attack and, you know, show off his, you know, Conqueror's Hockey. And then Kaido's like, oh, Law, stay right there. I'll be right there. And just, boom, smashes him. And then, you know, smashes Zoro, and during all of this, you know, Luffy is kind of regaining himself, regaining his composure, and then he stands up, and he's like, join you, why would we ever want to do that, like, we're friends with the samurai, we love the samurai, only an idiot would join you, and then we see Luffy, he's like, I figured it out, like, that last, you know, big smash with your Kanumbo kind of, it knocked something in my brain loose, and I was able to figure out, like, he's like, you infuse it with Conqueror's Hockey, and then Kaido's, like, starts laughing, he's like, yep, but only a select few of the strongest of the strong are able to do it, so, you know, for Luffy to then show that exact power and just start smacking Kaido up, I mean, looking like Boss Room, just bah, 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 smacking him up, you know, it was just excellent to see, and even Law's like, wait, you didn't, he didn't even touch him, and then we get that moment where Luffy's like, all right, guys, you guys were, you guys, thank you for protecting me. But now he's like, I got this. I will win this fight at any cost. We've hit that moment where Luffy's like, I got this, guys. You guys go downstairs. So uh, let everybody know I'm going to finish this one way or the other. I'm finishing it. And yeah, that's how the chapter ends. And the only other thing now, you know, that this has got me wondering, because we got Luffy sending, you know, Zoro and Trophy back down. We got uh, Killer and Kid over trying to deal with Big Mom and potentially, you know, whatever crazy thing we got going on in the clouds and, you know, Prometheus plan. But uh, if you guys remember, you know, maybe I'm wrong, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you count the number of times Orochi's head has been cut off, I think he still has potentially one more. And if you guys remember way earlier in the arc, um, when Yasu was uh, up on the thing and he was, you know, kind of trying to take blame for the plan and um, take the blame away from everyone and kind of shift the blame so the plan was able to still go forward, uh, you know, Orochi killed Yasu and Zoro swore that he would avenge Yasu. So Zoro has not had that opportunity and it'd be, you know, it seems a little weird for Zoro to come out and boldly state that he will avenge Yasu and kill Orochi and not have had that opportunity. And, you know, even in the scene where we see Orochi's head get cut off by all the scabbards, you know, we see Kaido cut his first head off, and then we see the scabbards cut off a bunch of heads. And, you know, right before that, Fukurokuju had mentioned to Orochi that he's like, Orochi-sama, I don't think they realized that you've already died once today. So, you know, kind of a weird thing to say, like, especially if 
all his heads are about to get cut off, would it matter? So I'm kind of wondering, you know, now that Zoro has able to been deal damage to a Yonko, is he now going to go downstairs and fulfill his promise? So um, let me know what you guys think. Like I said, this was just a hype chapter, 10 out of 10 excellent can't wait to see what we got you know we're on break this week but uh it's okay i need a little time to recover after an excellent chapter like that but thank you guys for stopping by uh subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day